This woman was put in charge of the border, and this was her response. Okay. Do you have any plans to visit the border? I, at some point, you know, I, we are going to the border. We've been to the border. So you, this whole, this whole, this whole thing about the border. We've been to the border. We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? And to lower the cost of everyday needs like health care and housing and groceries. We're going to end America's housing shortage? You just let in over 10 million people illegally and you put them all on housing vouchers and food stamps and gave them free plane tickets and free cell phones and all of them have to live somewhere. You caused America's housing shortage. If you care about the cost of housing, limit the population. Certainly don't expand it through uncontrolled immigration, through open borders, which is exactly what they did she's responsible for it. And her donors at BlackRock are buying up the houses in your neighborhood. And her donors at Airbnb are turning your neighborhood into a completely unmanageable garbage, a place filled with transients where there's no social connection at all between people. Those are her donors. Those are her policies. For her to lecture us on the housing shortage that she caused, it's almost too much. I, I can't sit here. What's the other thing we know about this population? And it's a specific phase of life. Remember, age is more than a chronological fact. What else do we know about this population, 18 through 24? They are stupid. <laughs> that is why we put them in dormitories. And they have a resident assistant. They make really bad decisions. After decades in law enforcement, I know the importance of safety and security, especially at our border. Last year, Joe and I brought together Democrats and conservative Republicans to write the strongest border bill in decades. The Border Patrol endorsed it. But Donald Trump believes a border deal would hurt his campaign. So he ordered his allies in Congress to kill the deal. Well, I refuse to play politics with our security. And here is my pledge to you. As president, I will bring back the bipartisan border security bill that he killed, and I will sign it into law. I know, I know we can live up to our proud heritage as a nation of immigrants and reform our broken immigration system. We can create an earned pathway to citizenship and secure our border. Now, Senator Harris says she's proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president, but I'm deeply concerned about this record. There are too many examples to cite, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. The bottom line is, Senator Harris, when you were in a position to make a difference and an impact in these people's lives, you did not, and worse yet, in the case of those who were on death row, innocent people, you actually blocked evidence from being revealed that would have freed them until you were forced to do so. There is no excuse for that, and the people who suffered under your reign as prosecutor, oh, you owe them an apology. Senator Harris. Because when we think about the strength of our democracy, you know, I think that there's a duality to the nature of democracy. When it's intact, oh, it's so strong in terms of what it does to uphold and protect individual rights and freedoms. So strong in its nature. And it's very fragile. It will only be as strong as our willingness to fight. We'll snatch their patent so that we will take over. And yes, we can do that. Yes, yes, we can do that. Yes, we can do that. It's what it's the question is, do you have the will to do it? I have the will to do it. Thanks a lot. Um, thank you. Um, okay, can you hold on to it? Um, ma'am, the US is
experiencing record inflation, the worst in 30 years, way beyond expectations. OPEC didn't increase oil production. Can you tell us a little bit about how you would prevent the, the new spending and your Build Back Better agenda from exacerbating the problem? And also, what else are you going to do to fix this problem with inflation? All right, thank you. Well, let's start with this. Prices have gone up, and families and individuals are dealing with the realities of, of the, that bread costs more, that gas costs more. And we have to understand what that means. That's about the cost of living going up. That's about having to stress and stretch limited resources. That's about a source of stress for families that is not only economic, but is on a daily level, something that is a heavy weight to carry. So it is something that we take very seriously, very seriously. And we know from the history of this issue in the United States that when you see these prices go up, it has a direct impact on the quality of life for all people in our country. So it's a big issue, and we take it seriously. And it is a priority, therefore. So we have addressed it in a number of ways. One of the um, issues that we know is, is related to this is uh, the supply chain issue that we just discussed. And so on a domestic level, in terms of domestic policy, one of the approaches we have taken is to work with labor unions and to work with municipalities in opening back up and extending the hours of our ports um, there are actually three I have in mind, Los Angeles, uh, Long Beach, and Savannah. Um, and in fact, part of the infrastructure um, bill uh, benefit is uh, most recently what we will do to assist Savannah in, in broadening their ability to be an active port. And we have seen a reduction in the, in the container ships um, off of the Long Beach and LA ports because of what we have done, which is to extend, as you know, the 24, or to extend the hours to now 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, but there is also a point that is important to make on the Build Back Better framework. One, it is designed to make it less expensive for working people to live. It was specifically designed to bring down the costs of childcare and increase accessibility and availability, designed to bring down the cost of elder care and make it available to all those working families that need that support and need that help. And Build Back Better is not going to cost anything. We're paying for it. So when we can get Build Back Better passed, and we are optimistic that we will, the American people will see costs actually reduced around some of the most essential services that they need to, to take care of their basic responsibilities, including issues like child care and elder care and also preschool. And that's an important point to mention also. And in fact, I had some conversations here in France, including with the Minister of Education in France, about the again, global impact of the pandemic on child care, but also on education, and in particular for our youngest children. Uh, universal pre-K, when we're able to do that, three and four years old, getting... She put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. The Democrat Party now believes in coronations. No primaries, no floor votes, just anoint Kamala Harris. Our next guest ran against then-Senator Harris in the 2020 presidential primary, and they had some notable exchanges. From the great state of Hawaii, one of my favorite colleagues, Tulsi Gabbard. Aloha, thank you for being here. What are some of your Aloha, recollections? My Aloha, my friend. What are some of your recollections of running against then Senator Kamala Harris? Well, she's the same person today now as she was then and as she always has been, Trey. And this is frankly what makes her an even more dangerous potential president than President Biden has been. And I think it's important for us to focus on this 
as they've made this change midstream. And the reason why she's more dangerous is because she is an ideologue. And her ideology is rooted in extreme policies that are far worse for our country than Joe Biden's have ever been. And I'll, I'll point to two major examples. The border is one of them. Uh, she really believes that the real problem with our open borders and, and this massive illegal immigration is crime and poverty in other countries. And so, therefore, she believes that instead of taking immediate action to secure our border, she must first go and solve poverty and crime, not only in Central and South America, but in countries around the world, because this is who we have flooding across our borders now, people from all over the world. Obviously, this is a very, very dangerous idea. And secondly, she has already shown in the Biden-Harris administration that, that she is not going to hesitate to weaponize the Department of Justice and law enforcement to go after her political opponents, to get what she wants. And, and so what we've seen over the last three and a half years has been so brazen in their abuse of power, it will be worse with Kamala Harris, who herself touts her record and what kind of president she will be as a prosecutor president, when we already know she will be a corrupt prosecutor president. I watched you with my own two eyes go toe-to-toe, uh, -to -toe, eyeball to eyeball with some of the so-called Democrat Party leaders about the way they were kind of coronating Hillary Clinton. Why not have a convention? Why not let others run? I mean, it's not like she finished a close second to Biden. She got the same number of delegates I got, and I didn't even run. <laughs> That says more about you, my friend. <laughs> um, it, it really reveals and affirms what we've known all along. It's one of the reasons why I left the Democratic Party, is they are not actually a Democratic Party. They don't believe in our country's democracy. So just like in 2016, they rigged the presidential primary for Hillary Clinton over Bernie Sanders and everyone else who ran. Just like in uh, 2020, they pre-selected which Democrat candidates they wanted voters to choose from and which of us they wanted to sideline, smear, and cancel. And just like in 2024, they stopped candidates from trying to run against Joe Biden and have an actual primary. And yet again, they are doing the exact same thing and not allowing, even in this moment, an open Democratic convention. They, they only care about control and power. And when, the, when you have President Obama and the Clintons and, and the other Democrat elite, they are the ones calling the shots. And they, they don't believe in we the people, even Democrat voters, having the freedom to exercise their own voices and their votes. Tulsi, the polling indicates something of a honeymoon for the vice president. I actually found a clip from James Carville uh, that did not have to be bleeped out. So let's listen to that together, and then I'll ask you a question on the other side. I have to be the skunk at the garden party. This kind of giddy elation is not going to be very helpful much longer, because that's not what we're going to be faced with. Every year, people gather to play fantasy basketball or fantasy football or whatever, and you get to pick the best players on the team. The Democratic Party has that type of opportunity. But they seem to be squandering it by taking a lesser pick. I'm not sure they should have picked Kamala. In the perfect world, I might have had more of an open audition process. I still rate him a, a you know, a pretty substantial a favorite in this race just because of the electoral challenges. We've only got about 30 seconds, so I'll ask you a quick question. Where, in your judgment, is she most vulnerable in the eyes of voters? She is incapable and unqualified to be president and commander in chief, and her record shows that. The truth shows that. The reality is, though, that whether it's Kamala Harris or any other Democrat that the elite would choose, they would all be the same. They would all pose the same direct danger and threat to our fundamental rights and freedoms in our country, because it's coming from people who care about their own power, and they don't care about the country and our Constitution. That's what every voter needs to remember as we head towards this election in November. Well, you, Tulsi, are the reason I watch the Democrat debate. Uh, I usually don't watch Democrat primary debates, but you're the reason I did watch it. Uh, and I thought you acquitted yourself quite well in your exchanges with the now vice president, as you always do. Thank you for joining us on a Sunday night. Great to see you. Thank you. Eliminate taxes on tips for service and hospitality workers. 
because when I get to office, we are going to not charge taxes on tips, people making tips. What's your favorite curse word? <laughs> I can't say it. It starts with an M and it ends with a. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> not E-R.